oil and gas safety officer interview. What is the safety? Safety is free from risk and danger. What are the responsibilities of a safety officer? The HSC officer acts in advisory capacity to the management and supervision with regards health and safety environment. He is to monitor and ensure that the activities are being performed with the acceptable safety norms. Helping supervisors to identify the hazardous and unsafe conditions and ensuring rectifications. Conducting toolbox meeting, supervisors safety meeting, conducting training in various topics, conducting safety incentive program, conducting safety auditing, inspection. Taking disciplinary action against the violations. Conducting risk assessment and JSA, pre-task meeting and all other project-related safety requirements. Keep track record all incidents at site. He is to investigate hazards and dangerous occurrences, examine the cause of accident, carry out safety inspection on site and what remedial steps, action has been undertaken. What is a permit to work procedure? The permit to work, PTW, procedure is a formal written system, which utilize a document to control the work by means of potential hazards identification and risk assessment. The work permit is also a means of communication among various supervisors or their respective belonging to operation, maintenance, controlling teams and contract personnel, who are involved in work preparation and or its execution. What is cold work? Any work that does not involve a source of ignition or naked flame or does not have spark generating potential is classified as a cold work. What is hot work? Any work which involves the use of naked or a source of ignition or spark generating potential is classified as a hot work. What is radiography work? Any work that involves the use of a radioactive source, shall be covered by a radiography work. What is the excavation? Any man-made cavity. Cut, trench or depression on an earth surface formed by earth removal. Manual excavation, the excavation without using any powered equipment. Mechanical excavation, the excavation work using any electrical or mechanical equipment. Why excavation notification required for excavation? Excavation notification gives detailed information about the underground facilities and it is to be signed by all concerned departments to confirm that the proposed excavation location has been identified and all safety measures have been taken for the existing underground facilities. What is excavation hazards? Cave-in or collapse of soil risk due to presence of underground installations, pipelines, cables, drowning due to water seepage into trench, soil vibration due to machinery, heavy vehicles operations in the vicinity, lack of oxygen or asphyxiation etc. Underground obstruction or damage to buried pipelines and services, Accidental fall of personnel or equipment inside a trench. Struck, hit by excavating machinery. Dropped, falling objects. Flammable and toxic gas release. Exposed to airborne contaminants. Fire and explosion. Electrical shock due to contact with energized electrical telecom cable 
possible presence of explosive devices. Damage to shallow underground services due to weight of heavy equipment such as mechanical excavator. Encountering wet soil, mixed with water, or reaching water table. Encountering contaminated soil. Enlist precaution to be taken prior to taken to and during excavation work. No excavation work in area without clearance of explosive ordnance disposal, EOD. No mechanical excavation closer than 5 meters to any hydrocarbon carrying pipeline. No mechanical excavation closer than 3 meter to a non-hydrocarbon carrying pipeline, cables and services. For any excavation deeper than 1 meter, ladder must be positioned projecting minimum 1 meter above the edge of the excavations. Ladders shall be provided every 7.5 meters, 25 feet, of lateral travel in the trench. Ladders shall be securely supported at the bottom as well as at the top. Excavated material shall be placed 1 meter from the edge of the excavation for depth up to 1.2 meter. Heavy equipment, machinery shall be kept at least 3 meters away from the edge. Any walkway across trench shall have scaffold type platform with handrails. All trenches shall have barrier, such as fixed guardrails, and reflective warning notices clearly displayed. Flashing lights are mandatory during poor visibility. The access to plant, equipment and emergency services must not be obstructed by the trenches. No mechanical excavation is allowed inside the existing cock facilities, gathering center, booster station, water injection and handling facilities, etc. What is confined space? Any enclosure having a limited means of entry and exit and it is not designed for continuous occupancy. There will be a presence of any hazardous substances such as flammable and toxic gases, oxygen deficiency, hot or humid atmosphere or any combination of it. Examples, process vessels, tanks, bins, stacks, large pipe, duct pits and trench etc. Any excavation with depth more than 1.2 meter. What are the confined space hazards? Oxygen deficiency. Presence of flammable, combustible or pyrophoric materials, HC, sludge etc. Presence of toxic gases, corrosive or hazardous materials, H2S. To NH3 etc. Poor illumination, ventilation and communication. High temperature and humidity. Limited entry and exit, restricted access. Restricted movement inside. Falling, tripping hazards. Presence of reactive or self-igniting material. Hazard due to electricity or moving machinery. Hazard due to pressurized fluid. Hazard due to nature of work carried out inside confined space. What is the procedure for entering a confined space hazards? A pre-task meeting must be conducted with all authorized entrants prior to entering confined space. The attendant, standby man, shall be assigned at the entrance to maintain communication with employees working inside to ensure their safety. A logbook shall be maintained at the entrance to keep track of the people inside the space. Safety attendant must be trained and authorized to use gas testing equipment. Entrants must wear body harness, and if necessary a lifeline be attached to the harness to avoid entry rescue.
Lighting should be provided, if necessary a maximum of 24 volts. Lighting should be used attached to GFCI. Only intrinsically safe or explosion proof equipment shall be used inside. Depending on the situation, emergency rescue team may be put on standby. If an emergency occurs within the confined space, the standby person must not enter it until rescue team arrived. Barricade the area with warning sign board. Explain H2S. H2S is produced or generated by decomposition of organic materials. It is a highly toxic gas and highly flammable. It smell like rotten egg at low concentrations and not detectable by order at high concentration. It is highly flammable. Flammable at 4.3% to 45.5% by volume in air. It is colorless. It is heavier than air. 1.19. It is highly soluble in water and other liquid. When burned or flared it forms sulfur dioxide, SO2, which is also colorless and highly toxic gas. The exposure limits 10 ppm is the maximum allowed for 8 hours. Increasing exposure will cause headache and irritation of eyes. 800 ppm or more will be instantly fatal. What are prominent H2S hazards? Eyes and respiratory irritation. Dizziness, headache, nausea, abdominal pain. Loss of consciousness, brain damage possible, death, fatal. Explain the precautionary measures to be taken while approaching H2S prone area. Sufficient number of escape masks shall be kept in areas where H2S is liable to present. In case H2S presence is suspected in an area, the persons must put on escape mask immediately and toxic gas test must be made immediately with appropriate detector to determine the concentration of H2S in air. Working person should be equipped with personal detectors and alarming device to alert in case of H2S presence. In case of H2S alarm, all personnel should vacate the area after donning the escape set breathing apparatus and report to the designated assembly point for mustering. If working in H2S, contaminated atmosphere must wear suitable BA set and work in pairs to support and rescue each other in the event of difficulties. Know the wind direction and evacuate in the crosswind direction in case of H2S leak. Never go to a low-lying area during H2S leak. Paste H2S warning sign in H2S prone areas. The presence or suspected of H2S in any part of the plant or sewer shall be reported immediately to supervisor and respective area fire station for arranging rescue and support. What is Flashpoint, FP? Minimum temperature at which a flammable mixture of gas or vapor in air will momentarily flash when a source of ignition, spark, is introduced. What is auto-ignition temperature, AIT? Minimum temperature required to initiate self-sustained combustion of a solid, liquid or gas in the absence of a source of ignition. What is L slash LFL? Lower explosive limit, LEL. Lower flammable limit, LFL. Minimum concentration of vapor or gas in air which will burn when a source of ignition, spark, is introduced. What is L slash UFL? Upper explosive limit, UEL. 
or upper flammable limit UFL maximum vapor gas to air concentration above which flame propagation will not occur that is the mixture is too rich to burn what is scaffolding Scaffolding is a temporary working platform to provide supports both men and materials for working place. What is potential hazards of scaffolding? Collapse of scaffolding. Falling from height. Falling object. Slip and trip hazards. Pinch point hazards, sharp edges. Opening without guardrail. Scaffold direction during storm or high winds, raining and poor visibility. Blocking emergency access and walkways. What is the cause of scaffolding failure? Slipping of unsecured ladder. Use of unsuitable scaffold or faulty materials. Inadequate or irregular platform width. Omission of guard rails or tow boards. Failure to proper secure scaffold to the building or to brace it adequately. Overloading on the scaffold platforms. What is the precaution during scaffolding erection? Scaffolding erection. Dismantling should be done under the supervision of a competent person, scaffolding supervisor. Red tag means danger do not use and green tag means scaffold complete ready for use when completed. Gap between boards. Planks should be 1 inch, 25 millimeters. Top guard rail, mid rail and tow boards should be provided. Guard rails and tow boards shall be fitted to the inside of standards. Guard rail should have a height between 915 millimeters, 0.9 meters or 90 centimeters or 3 feet to 1,143 mm, 1.15 meters or 39 inches. Tow board should be 6 inches, 15 centimeters, high and secured with tow board clips. If scaffold to be erected on so ground should be used sole plate. Worker shall be not work on scaffolds during storms or high winds or poor visibility. Sole plate shall extend under at least two standards. Base plates with screw jacks should be proper scaffold leveling adjustment. All standards shall be vertical. Ledges shall be securely fixed to standards couplers. Scaffolds should be properly braced by cross bracing or diagonal braces or both for securing vertical members together. Access ladder must be provided for any platform and clamped with scaffold structure. Ladder should be 4 to 1 ratio and angle 750 ladder should be rise 1 meter, 42 inch, above from the landing place, platform. Scaffold should be not obstruct access to, from any firefighting equipment, emergency equipment, operating aerial equipment, instrument and control panels, ladders, stairways etc. Scaffold platform opening should be secured with guardrail and signboard. All scaffolding couplers should be tightened. What is the hazards associated with electricity? Inadequate wiring. Exposed electrical parts. Wire with bad insulation. Undergrounded electrical systems and tools. Overloaded circuits. Damaged power tools and equipments. 
using the wrong PPE and tools. Overhead power lines All hazards are made worse in wet conditions. What are the precautions to be taken to avoid electrocution? All electrical work must be covered by an appropriate work permit. The authorized person approved by the relevant maintenance team can carry out electrical work. Electrical safety floor mats made from a special grade of insulating rubber shall be provided in front of switchboards or high voltage equipment to protect personnel against accidental electric shock. Warning tape on top of buried cables and electrical cable tiles must be provided as an early warning notice for excavations. All portable electrical equipment must be approved by the maintenance team and shall be used as per suitability for the relevant area only. Do not reach blindly into areas that may contain energized parts. Do not enter into a space where adequate lighting and working space is not available. Only industrial type plugs and sockets shall be used on all locations other than offices and houses. All testing and measuring equipment used for the electrical works should be tested, calibrated and documented. Ensure all equipments are grounded and should be attached GFCI slash ELCB. Inspect electrical equipments before use. Electrical panel, junction boxes, pull boxes and fitting must have approved covers. Unused openings in cabinets, boxes and fittings must be closed. Don't overload on a circuit. Maintain the distance from overhead power lines during the crane activity and scaffolding erection and other activities. All cable of power tools, portable tools should be double insulated. Don't use damage extension cords and don't touch live wire and another wire at a different voltage. Damaged equipment must not be touched until the isolated. Disconnect the power when not in use and when changing accessories. Use the appropriate PPE for the job. Competent, qualified and approved personnel should be carry out testing and energizing of the equipment. Electrical lockout and tag out system should be used when working on electrical equipments. In the event of fire on electrical panel or equipment, the electrical power supply must be isolated and suitable fire extinguisher shall be used to extinguish the fire. What are safety precautions you will take for a temporary electrical connection? Temporary wiring shall be guarded or isolated by elevating to prevent accident contact with workmen or equipment. Vertical clearance above walkways shall not be less than 3 meters, 10 feet, for circuits carrying 600 volts or less. Wires shell is insulated from their support. Temporary festoon lighting strings shall be made up with cords having lamp sockets and connections protected by insulating coverings. Extension cords shall be of approved types and used for the purpose for which they are made. Expose empty light sockets and broken bulbs shall be prohibited. In case of fire, accident, gas leak or explosion what you will do? Inform to nearest fire station, Bergen Fire Station with clear details about the incident and emergency evacuation plan will be following up. All running equipment must put off.
all people have to evacuate in the crosswind direction and calmly walk to the assembly area there on instructions will mount on the available transport. The transport will take all to a safe area. Every section will have a head count by section head or timekeeper or check that anyone missing or not. If anyone gets hurt during explosion, gas leak, fire or accident, will be evacuated to the nearest medical center after giving first aid by qualified first aider or doctor. Emergency officer will give clear instructions of situation improved or all will be evacuated to a safe area. All work permits will become nullified during emergency automatically. During emergency an appointed senior staff, senior safety officer will take charge as an emergency officer. All will wait in the safe area until further instruction come from the emergency officer for either to return back to the work or to a safe area. Enlist precaution to be taken prior to start the welding. Hot work will start with a valid hot work permit. If it is inside GC or refinery then need to cover the welding point with proper fire blanket. Frequent gas test to be carried out. Wet the area with water and pressurized fire water hose to be kept near the hot work area. Combustible materials to be removed from welding point. Keep the certified and valid fire extinguisher near the hot work area. Trained and certified fire watcher should be present. Equipment, which will be used for hot work to be inspected before starting up the job. All welding machine must be connected with GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, or ELCB, earth leakage circuit breaker and approved spark arrester. All welding machines must be ground with static earthing device. All cable must be properly insulated and electrode holder, plugs and sockets must be in good condition. The equipment or pipe, spool should be supported on a secured and firm base during welding or grinding. All valves, flanges, drains, canals etc. where gas leaks or presence of flammable atmosphere is possible should be covered. What are the safety precautions taken gas welding and cutting? Any hot work will start with a valid hot work permit. Frequent gas test to be carried out. In a gas welding or cutting operations, the oxyacetylene flames shall be ignited by the light especially designed. The pressure regulators and gauges shall be suitable and in good working condition. The cylinder valve must be closed before the regulator is removed. Flashback arresters should be fitted both end with the hoses to prevent flashback. The adequate ventilation must be provided to expel toxic gases, fumes, if activities carried out inside a tank, vessel, any confined space. All valves, flanges, drains, canals etc. where gas leaks or presence of flammable atmosphere is possible should be covered. Combustible materials to be removed from welding point. Valid fire extinguishers and fire watcher should be provided. When need to cover the welding point with proper fire blanket. When necessary, wet the area with water and pressurized fire water hose shall be provided. Equipment, which will be used for hot work to be inspected before starting up the job. All hose and cable. Plugs and sockets must be in good condition. What are the welding and cutting hazards? 
risk due to toxic gas and fumes generated while welding or cutting. Fire or explosion started by flame, sparks and hot material from the activities. Electrical shock from arc welding equipment. Burn hazard due to heat generated while welding or cutting. Weld bead particulars or slag entering unprotected eyes during chipping. Inhalation of welding fumes. Falling gas cylinders. Radiation from UV and infrared, flash eye. What will be your action if someone informs you about accident? Ask him the location of the accident and the details. After reach the location analyze the situation, if someone get hurt during accident must be evacuated to the nearest medical center after giving first aid by a qualified first aider or doctor. Report to near fire station, Bergen fire station with clear location and details of the accident. Report to client HSE specialist and concerned project manager. Investigate the accident and prepare an accident report with attached sketch and supporting documents and submit to client HSE department. What is the MSDS? Material safety data sheet is detailed information about the physical and chemical characteristics of the chemicals as well as their health, safety, fire, reactivity and environmental hazards and its precautions. It is provided by manufacturer. What is the JSA? JSA stands for Job Safety Analysis. It is to be completed before start of any new job. It clearly defines the specific job, equipments and tools to be used, specific hazards of the job and preventive measures to be taken. It is to be filled by supervisory staff and discussed with HSE department. It is to be signed by all concerned to confirm that everyone involved does know about the job and how to do it in safe way. Define lockout tag out LOTO system. Lockout and tag out is a process to block the flow of energy from the source and it will locked with lock system or padlock for not restore the energy and these should be tag on it. The tag will be as warning do not operate. Locks and tags will be normally be removed only by the person who installed them whenever possible. Before lockout and tag out make sure that a valid isolation permit being obtained. What are the general precautions to be taken before and during using an abrasive wheel? Ensure the spindle speed doesn't exceed the maximum speed marked on the wheel. Ensure fit the wheel on the spindle freely. Tighten the spindle nut enough to hold the wheel in place without distorting the flange. Do not stand in front of the rotated wheel. Provide protective guard for a moving abrasive wheel and maintain proper alignment with the wheel. For any bench mounted abrasive wheel, the wheel rest should be adjusted as close as practicable to the abrasive wheel, which shall be firmly secured. Before mounting inspect closely for damage, perform sound test touring test to ensure free from cracks, defects. Don't adjust wheel while it's rotating and disconnect tools when not used. Must be used iron face protective device, goggles, face shield etc. Wear the suitable respiratory protection also in case abrasive wheel generates dust. A sign shall be posted near all fixed abrasive wheel. Changing the wheel. Don't use expired abrasive wheel and remove damage, crack wheel and tag it do not use. Must be used iron face protective device, goggles, 
face shield etc. Wear the suitable respiratory protection also in case abrasive wheel generates dust. A sign shall be posted near all fixed abrasive wheel. What is safety precaution to be taken prior to start and during the work at height? The work is properly planned, organized, appropriately supervised and carried out ensuring safety of workers and integrity of worksite. The worksite including its access as well exit is safe with necessary protection against fall from height. Similarly the workers to be deployed for work at height are trained and aware of potential hazards. PPE, appropriate fall arrest system such as safety harness, safety nets etc. shall be used to protect the person from fall. The personnel working at height must use appropriate and approved full body safety harness and attached to a secure anchorage. All the straps of safety harness shall be securely tightened to the body parts. The tools and equipment to be used at height must be kept properly secured to prevent its accidental fall or tripping hazard. The area in the vicinity of work at height should be barricaded and danger notice posted to alert the personnel. Man basket Workers should keep all body parts inside the man basket while it is being laid or positioned. Workers must wear a personal fall arrest system, and helmet with chin strap must be worn at all times. Sloping roofs Employee worked in roofing activities on slope roofs with unprotected sides and edges 6 feet 1.8 meters, or more above shall be used appropriate safety harness safety net and guardrail or a combination of these. What are the safety precautions to be taken while performing lifting operation? The load is clear of any obstruction. The load is securely slung, use tie ropes. The security of the load is to be reconfirmed once the load is raised a few inches. The crane is not used to drag the load or pull the slings beneath a few inches. No movement is allowed under the suspended load. Barricade the swing radius of the crane. Never sling different size of tubular together. The crane hook is in central position over the load. All equipment must be inspected by third party and validity of inspection must be checked. Daily inspection sheet of cranes must be always available with crane operated. SWL of the crane and hook shall be marked and highlighted. Fire extinguisher of approved type and capacity. Crane hook secured prevent swinging action in transit. A calibrated SWL indicator and crane capacity chart prominently displayed in the cabin. All loose material is to be removed from the top of the load. Slings are protected from sharp edges by using suitable packing. Hooks used on lifting equipment should be fitted with safety device to prevent the load or sling displacement for hook. Do not use wire rope slings if it is kinked, crushed, frayed or corroded. Slings must never shortened by tying knots in them or by wrapping round a crane hook. What are the potential hazards while performing lifting operation? Accidents hit or crush by hanging load. Falling objects. Collapse of lifting equipment due to overload. Overturning of the crane. Failure of lifting gears such as wire ropes, hooks, shackle, eye bolts, chain etc.
What is rigging and slinging? Rigging and slinging is a part of mechanical handling activity which involves lifting and shifting of heavy material through the safe use of equipment, machinery or devices such as crane, wire rope, hooks, shackles, chain pulleys etc. Explain PPE. Personal protective equipment is indented to protect employees from hazards. There are specific protective equipments for specific job. PPE will protect you only if used it in the intended way. PPE is working barrier between harm and human body. What is non-hazardous waste? Unwanted materials, substances other than the hazardous. They could be in the form of a solid, sludge, slurry and liquid. What is hazardous waste? Any waste, solid, sludge, slurry and liquid, which is either, combustible, explosive, inflammable, corrosive, reactive or toxic. What is defensive driving? Driving to prevent accidents, in spite of the incorrect actions or others or adverse weather conditions. Anticipate driving hazards and know how to protect yourself from them. Be alert while driving by keeping your mind free of distractions and your attention focused on driving. Alertness involves watching and recognizing accident, causing factors instantly. The professional has foresight and ability to recognize the traffic situations as far ahead as possible. The driver must anticipate traffic problems that are likely to develop and decide whether these developments could be dangerous. As a defensive driver everyone must operate their vehicle in a manner to avoid contributing to an accident or being involved in a preventable accident. To be a good driver you should respect all traffic laws and be courteous to other. Write in detail about construction waste management and safe disposal. Good housekeeping is to be maintained during day-to-day -day operations. All waste streams that are generated in the project area is to be identified, classified and entered in a waste register. All disposal sites used are to be designed and approved. The subcontractor in charge of waste management and disposal must be licensed and approved. All environmental incident and accident spillage or discharges must be properly managed and documented. All waste materials must be disposing in an approved area. Enlist main responsibilities of permit applicant. All the required information as stipulated in the permit must be entered before the permit is submitted for approval and authorization. Any required preparatory work must be stipulated in the permit application. All personnel under his responsibility must be advised of their responsibility under work permit system. No job can begin until he is satisfied that the worksite supervisor understands his responsibilities under work permit system. The safety gears and appliances required for the work must be available. What are the full protection systems? Safety belt Safety harness Lifeline Safety net Guardrail system What are the hazards will you expect hand grinding MC? Eye injuries due to flying particles, metal chips Wheel bursting Electric shock Cloth caught.